Hey everyone, how's everybody doing? Good, I hope. We're all doing as well can, as can be expected. Uh, we're all feeling a little bit cooped up, but we do have a very large parking lot that we can go for walks in every day, so that's awesome. It's uh, Wednesday, I think, day number 543 of social isolation, or at least that's what it feels like to me. I'm sitting in my office today in an empty building, reading my Bible and thinking of all of you. For the last little while, I've been spending a great deal of time with my family, as you all know, but I'm still going a little bit crazy not being able to go out and about, and I guess I'm just missing everybody. Anyway, I was just reading Philippians, and I came across a scripture that most of you know pretty well, I imagine. It's Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, where it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What I like about this is that Paul's reminding us that instead of getting all worked up about all the stuff that's going on in our lives, we should be instead asking God to take care of it all of it. We should go to him with the things that trouble us. We should turn it over to him, anything that's bothering us or worrying us or making us feel messed up in our emotions. You see, he's saying that we should tell God what's bugging us. And I wonder, have you done that this week? Have you shared what's going on in your heart and your mind with God? Because sometimes we keep all that stuff inside. Have you turned it over to him so that he can take that stress from you? because he wants to. You see, he wants you to be free from anxiety. He wants you to be free of worry, free from everything that troubles you, in fact. He wants you to be free. More than that, Paul points out that when we do give these things over to God, that the Lord blesses us with supernatural peace. Paul says that it's a peace that transcends all understanding. That means that it's bigger than all the stuff that's going on in our lives. It's bigger than we can know. It's more powerful than what we're capable of knowing. In fact, it can dispel more junk than we're capable of understanding. His peace is supernatural, and he wants us to have it. But there's one thing that Paul adds, though, that we sometimes forget. You see, he doesn't just say that we're to go to God with our problems, though that is true. He doesn't just say that we're to turn those things over to him. He says that we're supposed to do it with thanksgiving. And that's sometimes hard, especially when, you know, everything seems to be uh, frustrating. So I want to ask you, what are you thankful for today? See, I'm thankful that we still have food on our table. I'm thankful for this church family, all of you who care so deeply for us and for one another. I'm thankful that spring's finally in the air, though it's a little gray today. I'm thankful that despite all that's going on right now, we're safe. I'm thankful for the home that we have to live in and the people that we have to reach out to and the special ways that God keeps showing up in our day-to-day -day lives. But I'm most grateful for the Spirit of God that offers me peace and calms my own spirit in the midst of whatever challenges I might be facing. So today, I want to encourage you to consider what you are grateful for in your life. What has God blessed you with today? And if you can't think of anything right away, take a few minutes to search for it. There are so many people around this world that don't have the things that we have despite what we're going through. I can walk to a tap, turn on the water, and have cool, clear drinking water any time of the day I want. Walk outside and the air is fresh and clean and clear. I have family close by, neighbors that are not too far. I have a wonderful, loving church family. I just encourage you to search for those things in your life. Think about them. Tell him about them. I want to pray for you before we go. I really am missing you all. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you again very, very soon. 
Keep in mind, we have a lot of stuff that's sort of brewing in the background. We're trying to figure out how to be creative about how we do uh, fellowship in the church. So uh, as always, my sermon will be uploaded for Sunday morning. We're going to continue to connect. Uh, Tracy right now is working on setting up a uh, virtual prayer room uh, using Zoom. Uh, so watch, watch for emails and, and watch for uh, phone calls that might come in, or listen for them rather. Um, and certainly be watching on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel to see what might be getting uploaded in the days to come. We're working hard. We're going to stay connected. And remember, we are all still together, even if geographically we are apart. So, Father, I want to I want to thank you for our church today. I thank you for this church family, uh, each one of them, such a blessing to me personally, and I know a blessing to each other. I just pray in this challenging time, Lord, that your hand of blessing would be upon them, that you would encourage their hearts and remind them of your goodness, remind them of the things that you have blessed them with in this life. And though things might seem a little sketchy, a little strange or challenging at times, that you are still with us, that you still love us, that you still very much have a plan for us. I pray, Father, that in the days to come that you would continue to pour out your spirit upon this church and that each of us would have a a tangible sense of your presence among us, Lord. Remind us that you are near. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Blessings all. I hope to see you all again very, very soon.